Okay. Hi, welcome to this um, program with the Redwood City Library and Commute.org. Thank you so much for being here today. Um, we're a small group, so that means that you get one-on-one -on -one attention from possibly the greatest commuting experts in our entire county, the team from Commute.org, um, and they're here to answer, to share some tips and resources with you you about um, commuting, taking public transportation, carpooling, biking, etc. in our county, through our county, to our county, from our county. Um, so I'm so happy to be joined today by Nora and Mary and Kim. And um, I'm going to turn off my video too, so it's not distracting. But again, welcome. Thank you for coming. If you have any questions, you're welcome to put them in the chat. Um, and without further ado, I'm going to turn it over to Nora and Mary. Uh, thank you, Fiona, and uh, good afternoon. My name is Mary Thomas Meyer, and I'm joined by Nora Hannock. We're here from commute.org to talk with you about your travel options and provide tips to ensure safe travel, whether you're commuting or running errands or what have you. Um, this presentation was inspired by commute.org safe commute guide that Nora created back in the fall of 2020. Um, it's available in English and Spanish on our website if you are interested in checking that out. Please note that the guide is a compilation of current CDC guidelines, which are subject to change based on uh, wherever COVID takes us in the next few months, if case numbers rise or if the vaccine rollout um, is able to uh, decrease case numbers. Um, if you have any questions during the presentation, please feel free to speak up or drop it in the chat and Nora, Kim and I will do our best to answer them. Uh, I'm gonna hand it off to Nora. Next slide, please. Hi everyone, I'm Nora. Um, as Mary mentioned, we've created a guide with tips for protecting yourself and others while commuting. Um, and this also includes some local resources to navigate commuting specifically in San Mateo County. Um, so these are the standard guidelines we've posted on our website. And to the last point, um, CA Notify is California's exposure notification system. So you may consider activating it on your phone to get COVID-19 exposure alerts. And to protect your privacy, CA Notify does not gather your name, contact information, or location. And for more information on that, you can visit canotify.ca.gov. And in the chat, we will attach the guide to commuting that we mentioned um, earlier on. Um, next slide, please. So throughout this presentation, we will cover several commuting options, including transit, rideshare, biking, and telework. Next slide, please. Starting with transit, um, transit agencies have made some changes in response to the pandemic. You can visit your transit, transit agency's website or contact its customer service to determine any route or schedule changes. And there may be signage posted at transit stops or on board directing riders to follow new safety guidelines. This could be blocking seats to ensure um, social distancing. Um, and you may have to take a later bus or train to allow for social distancing if your usual bus or train has reached its capacity limit. We also suggest avoiding traveling during peak hours if possible and also recommends looking into Clipper cards, um, which is a great way for to use touchless payment. And because BART recently converted all stations to accept Clipper cards only. You can also see if your employer or residential community offers the SamTrans Way to Go program, which provides annual unlimited ride passes. And there are also a few other discount programs um, that Clipper offers, including youth cards for ages five through 18, senior cards for ages 65 and over, and Clipper Start, which offers a discount of 20 or 50%, depending on the transit agency. And this Clipper Start program is for income qualified riders between the ages of 19 and 64. And there's also the RTC Clipper card for riders under 65 with qualifying disabilities. 
So lot, lots of options to look into. Um, and one more point um, to, to avoid touching surf surfaces while riding transit, you can purchase or make a personal hand strap um, and BART sells personal hand straps for riders on their website, on their online store, um, but it's also possible to make your own. So if you're feeling crafty, you can use BART's model as a source of inspiration. And next slide, please. So each transit agency has taken measures to ensure the safety of its riders. So I'm just gonna go through different agencies and say, tell you what they've done to modify their services. Um, so starting with SamTrans, SamTrans provides bus service through throughout San Mateo County and into parts of San Francisco and Palo Alto. Um, and they have partnered with other Bay Area transit agencies to develop commitments for employees and passengers. And from this work, they created a Bay Area Healthy Transit Plan to align the region's public transit health and safety standards. And the plan calls for face coverings, physical distancing, cleaning and disinfecting practices, as well as maximizing fresh air on board. Moving on to Caltrain, um, Caltrain has implemented a new schedule, improving, providing, excuse me, providing two trains per hour on weekdays and one train per hour on weekends to improve service for essential workers and other riders who are dependent on transit. And trains um, now have six cars to allow for social distancing. BART has reduced hours. They now have longer trains, new seat layouts and weekly crowding charts. So people can make informed decisions based on historical capacity. Um, and SF Bay Ferry has modified schedules with th service on the Richmond, Vallejo, and Alameda slash Oakland routes. Um, and they also release weekly rider occup occupancy charts showing available seating during peak hours um, and on those three routes that are currently in service. And last but not least, um, commute.org shuttles continue to be free and open to the public. Each shuttle has hand sanitizer dispensers and current ridership levels allow for plenty of social distancing. And almost all routes are operating on revised schedules due to the reduced BART and Caltrain services. Um, so you can check out our website for the most up-to-date schedule information that apply to your specific routes. Um, so now I'm gonna pass it on to Mary to talk about rideshare. Commuters report back to us that between the door-to-door -door service and cost sharing, they find carpooling to be more convenient and have saved time and money compared to other modes. So to keep carpooling safe for both riders and drivers, we suggest following these tips. Limit carpools to one driver and one rider and have the rider sit in the back seat opposite of the driver. Keep the windows open and turn off air recirculation to improve ventilation. Try to ride with the same person or people in your household um, each day and avoid introducing new riders to your carpool. To do that, consider creating a digital message board on a site like Nextdoor or post a physical one in the common space if you live in an apartment complex. Um, this helps you coordinate carpooling with your neighbors. Lastly, be sure to clean all high touch surfaces after each ride. Next slide, please. If you're interested in carpooling but can't find anybody to carpool with, uh, try Scoop or Waze Carpool, which are both carpool matching apps. You provide your origin, your destination, and your work schedule, and it will match you with people who have similar commutes to yours. Uh, so you can carpool together. I also want to know that with Waze, you can request carpool rides on the waze.com website. So you don't have to have a smartphone or download the app to use Waze. Both Scoop and Waze have made some changes to their platform to ensure the safety of uh, carpool drivers and riders. All users must agree to the health and safety guidelines, such as certifying they haven't tested positive for COVID-19 um, or they haven't been in contact with somebody who has tested positive, um, and that they won't carpool if they develop any symptoms. 
Both apps also allow you to choose who you carpool with. So that helps you make sure that you ride with the same person regularly. Next slide, please. So biking is also another great option for saving time and money. And I think we all know that the additional benefit of staying active. So if it's been a while since you've ridden a bike, it never hurts to refresh your bike safety and rules of the road knowledge. You can consider watching one of our, one or all of our five bike education webinars that we've um, produced with the Silicon Valley Bicycle Coalition. Topics include basic safety tips and rules of the road, family biking and tips on what types of bikes may best suit you or your type of commute. And the recordings are available on our YouTube channel. Um, and you can also check out the San Mateo County Office of Sustainability Safe Bicycling brochure uh, available in English and Spanish on our website. Um, so after brushing up on your bicycle knowledge, you can plan your route using commute.org's trip planner at mycommute.org. And again, if it's been a long time since you've ridden a bike, it's a good idea to check your bike brakes, chain, and tires to make sure it's safe to ride. And when you're ready to head out, don't forget to wear your mask in case you need to stop or unexpectedly need to take transit or Uber or Lyft in case of an emergency. And looking forward, we hope you can join us in the month long celebration of bicycling in May for Bike Month. Um, you can track your May bicycling trips on our star platform at my.commute.org um, for a chance to win weekly prizes. And you are also welcome to create a team with your friends, coworkers, or family to encourage each other to get outside and get biking. Um, so by tracking your bicycle trips on your star account or through your connected apps, um, in, which include Strava and Commute Tracker, you are automatically entered to win prizes. So week, weekly prizes this year include cool things like bicycle lights, water bottles, bicycle tool pouches, handle bags, um, handlebar bags, and more. Um, and plus you'll be entered into a drawing for one of three $100 e-gift cards as part of our spring commuter promotion. So lots of opportunities to be rewarded for your, your great actions. Um, and leading up to May, I'm just gonna point out several bike related events that are happening. Um, so first libraries in San Mateo County are hosting Bike to Your Library Day on Saturday, May 22nd from 11 a.m. until supplies last. Um, so you can ride by any participating library, library branches curbside pickup locations to grab a Canvas messenger bag, which is provided by commute.org. And the Redwood City Library is actually one of the participating branches. And you can check directly with your other local library branches to see if they're participating. And secondly, um, three farmers markets in San Mateo are hosting Bike to Your Farmers Market Day on Sunday, May 9th. And the markets participating are Belmont, Foster City, and the 25th Avenue Market in San Mateo. And they'll each be passing out the canvas bags at their information booths. So be sure to check that out if you're at the farmers market. And um, the Silicon Valley Bicycle Coalition currently has a pledge to ride going on. So you can participate in their pledge by going to their website. And you'll, with that pledge, you'll get a bike to wherever day bag and have the chance to win prizes during bike month and on bike to wherever day itself, which is May 21st. And SVBC will hold random drawings during the month, um, but you can only win if you take the pledge. <laughs> and in preparation for bike month, SVBC is hosting a webinar um, with some experts who shop by bike instead of using a car. So here you can learn tips and tricks to making shopping fast, easy, and secure. And this will be an interactive online class that will feature a brief presentation and a QA. and a um, So for this event, you can register in advance and I'll attach the link in the chat. So that'll be a, a very nice event. So. 
Um, and I just rambled off a lot of events so you can stay updated by signing up for our newsletters or by following us on social media to see how you can stay involved during bike month and for bike to wherever, wherever day itself. Um, so I will pass it on to Mary to talk about telework now. Uh, we recognize that only a minority of people in the Bay Area are currently teleworking or remote learning full time. If you happen to be one of them, we pulled together some helpful tips for working from home or remote learning. We find that it helps to keep a routine to signal the beginning and the end of the work or school day. Try to establish regular working hours to maintain a healthy work or school home balance. Uh, staying active is important for everyone, whether they're working from home or if they're in the office. Be sure to stand up, stretch, or take a short walk every few hours if possible. Regularly communicating with your team about projects you're working on is important when teleworking. Technical glitches are inevitable, so please be patient with video conferencing tools. If you are expecting, uh, if you're experiencing bandwidth issues, check with your internet provider to see what you can do to optimize your Wi-Fi connection. Finally, identify distractions such as chores and members of your household, pets, and set ground rules to stay on task. Next slide, please. So whether you bike, walk, carpool, or take transit or telework, commute.org has a program for you. You can access all of our programs with a free account on my.commute.org also known as our STAR platform, where people log their trips and participate in our reward programs. There's also a trip planning tool that will show you all of your travel options for getting from point A to point B. Alternatively, uh, you can request a personal commute plan that will take into consideration your work schedule and non-work commitments. You tell us which modes you're interested in and we'll present you with a customized trip plan made just for you. There's a lot that we do, um, and I'm happy to go into more detail depending on um, the audience's interests. The carpool, bike, and vanpool rewards are all based on number of days. For example, every 10 days of carpooling or biking to work uh, earns you $25 in the form of an e-gift card. And you can earn up to four rewards for a total of $100. You do need to use a mobile app to track your trips and link it to your STAR platform accounts. That means using Scoop or Waze for carpooling or Strava for the Bike Rewards Program. As for our Vanpool Rewards Program, it's structured just a little bit differently in that you earn a different amount depending on if you drive the Vanpool, if you ride in the Vanpool. If you're interested in learning more about it, um, you can see details on our website, which is commute.org. Our seasonal promotions happen four times a year in the fall, spring, uh, summer, and winter. We raffle off three $100 e-gift cards uh, to those who log alternative mode trips on the STAR platform. All trips completed by any mode that isn't driving alone counts. The spring promotion is happening right now uh, throughout April and May, so there's plenty of time for you to still participate. We distribute free transit tickets for Sam Trans, Caltrain, and the ferry through, through our Tri Transit program. We also offer a guaranteed ride home program. So if you take transit or carpool, walk, or bike to work and you have an emergency come up, uh, we will cover the cost of your ride home if you need to leave early, um, either home or, or wherever you need to go. And any form of transportation, if it's an Uber or Lyft, if it's transit or car share, it will be reimbursed by us. Those are our programs in a nutshell. Again, they're all available on my.commute.org and you can check them out by creating a free account. For more details on our programs, please visit commute.org. Next slide, please. I know we covered a lot of information. If you would like to talk about commuting in depth or at another time, or if other questions come up, we are always available to talk. I know I already mentioned it, but again, we offer one-on-one -on -one personalized commute planning to walk people through their options. Um, our contact information is on that slide, as you can see. Thank you for your time this afternoon, and we're happy to answer any questions.